Hey everybody, so today's quick tip is a three axis feature called morph, uh, morph between two curves or morph between two surfaces. You'll find this toolpath in the Mill Premium software. And as you can see in this example here, we have this radius that uh, is coming up along this curve on this cylinder and we just want to machine just this radius here. Okay, so you can see I have this toolpath already set up. I'm using a morph between two surfaces and what we're and I'm also using a, a spiral routine so you can see how there's no um, linking between each path. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove this uh, this feature for now. And again, this is uh, this radius that we want to machine here. So we're going to go into the machine setup and down to mill multi-axis. Now the mill multi-axis is your three, four, or five axis surface-based toolpaths here. As a mill premium user, you get access to these toolpaths. Again, uh, they'll be limited to three axis, uh, but they, they give you a lot of control and options. And again, in today's example, we're looking at the morph between two surfaces toolpath. Uh, we'll go ahead and choose next. Uh, from here, we're going to set up the tool size. I'm just going to use a half inch ball mill, and then we're going to go to our parameters. Now, the selection process is a little bit different with the surface based tool paths. We generally don't select the whole model. We're a little more uh, specific about what we're working with. Now, in this example, we need to select two surfaces and then a drive surface. Uh, the, the first surface we're going to select is going to be this outside surface here, and we'll go ahead and choose OK. The next surface we're going to select is actually a series of surfaces. It's all these inside surfaces. And again, as a more for a blended style strategy, we're selecting the two surfaces or two groups of surfaces. We want the toolpath to be blended or morphed between. And then the last step here for the selection would be our drive surface. And this would be the surfaces we want the toolpath generated on. Okay, so we have all those surfaces selected. We're going to go ahead and choose OK. Now from here, I'm gonna come down to where it says one-way cutting. Uh, we can do two-way cutting, one-way cutting, or a spiral. In this example, I wanna use the spiral routine to remove any linking between the tool paths, and that should improve our surface finish. Uh, we'll go up to our tool axis control. Now I do have a, a full license of the software, so I, have, I, I can use these strategies in three, four, or five. If you're a mill, premium user, it will be limited to three axis. So you won't have to worry about the tool axis control. Uh, gouge checking we could use if we wanted to add some additional stock or if we were going to check. But in this example, we're going to jump over that. Now our linking, this is where we set our retracts here. Uh, this is where the tool would go when it's done. So I just want to make an adjustment here to the size. We'll say OK to that. Uh, we also have whether we're going to use a lead in and lead out. Uh, you get a bunch of different options with these, but I'm just going to make some adjustments here and say OK. Uh, and that's really about it. From here, we're going to just compute our toolpath. We'll take a moment to calculate it, and we'll get a morph toolpath from that outside cylinder to our inside geometry uh, following along the drive surface that we generated. This is a very popular, very uh, powerful toolpath. There's a lot of different applications for it. If you guys haven't uh, given it a, a, a shot, I'd recommend either downloading a demo of the V31 um, or talking with one of your account managers to learn more about this toolpath.